Oh, good morning. We're in Llanerch, uh, one of the most interesting sites uh, that the Woodland Trust owns in Northwest Wales. My name's Ed and I'm site manager here um, and I'm really happy to meet up with Nigel Brown, a local expert in uh, the natural world, especially, um, well, all sorts of things. Um, but we're here today specifically to look at mushrooms and uh, mushrooms in the ancient woodland that we're about to go into. What do you think we'll find today, Nigel? Well, first of all, I'm fascinated by fungi and delighted to be in what is arguably one of Britain's best woods for trees and other wildlife. And we're sure to find a bonanza of fungi here. And this is one of the best examples of a woodland spanning the lowlands and the uplands here in the Celtic fringe. So it's going to have lots to offer. Excellent. Hi Anita, welcome to Llanach. Thank you very much. It's great to have this opportunity to uh, go and explore this wonderful woodland with our specialists that are going to help us understand about the fungi and this opportunity to create a bit of film to uh, inspire others to learn about the fungi. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to um, what's going to happen today and what we might find. Um, and the Woodland Trust are really pleased to be working in partnership with the Celtic Rainforest Project, um, which is really exciting. <laughs> it is. It's all these beautiful treasures in the, uh, the forest, the woodland, so let's go and see what we can find. Perfect. Oh, Nigel, what's this? Oh, wow, well done, Ed. Nice find. That's lovely. It's, it's a cautionaries. Oh, right, yeah. yeah. Um, really well camouflaged amongst the decaying oak leaves as well. And this is a nice find. It's a typical oak woodland fungus. But it's quite easy to, to get this one wrong because it looks like a few other things as right. well, including a nice edible species, the bluet. Um, but when you look more closely, underneath there are gills and they're, they're covered in this beautiful sort of very pale clay brown uh, spore deposit that will go really rusty in a day's time. Right. And that tells you it's a cortinarius, whereas if it was a wood bluet, it would be white or pink okay. on the underside. So yeah, you've got to be careful because the wood bluet's great to eat, but this one certainly isn't. It's probably mildly poisonous. It's got this beautiful flush of purpley purplish lilac scales on the underside which is another clue really attractive well done brilliant thank you good start so Nigel it's important that we don't pick all the mushrooms in the woodland isn't it it is this one's that it's uh, height of its spore producing powers I would think, probably producing 50 million spores a day. Wow. So we might as well let it carry on doing that and those spores will disperse and uh, establish elsewhere in the woodland. The important point about this fungus is that it's uh, helping all the trees grow. Right. So uh, it's an important item in the woodland. Beautiful though as well. Just nice to see it left yeah. where it's growing in the wild. Brilliant. Thank you. Oh, look over here, Ed. This is nice. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a... That's just, oh, it's a brown roll rim. You can tell because the gills, they're so broadly attached to the stalk, they almost run down the top bit of the stalk. And they're really dark brown. And 
if I touch them, they're really mushy as well. They come off on the end of your finger. And that, that cap colour is very distinctive. And the little depression at the top, like a little bird bath at the top of the, the cap. It's common, uh, especially where you've got a smattering of uh, birch. There's a birch up there. It'll be attached to its roots. Lovely. Brown roll room. Excellent. Thank you. Here's something interesting, Michael. Right? Yeah, it is. Ed. Nice one. That's honey fungus for you. Armillaria. It's uh, one of Britain's commonest and uh, most influential fungi in terms of its ecology. As you can see, it's growing the length of this dead uh, branch. And it's killed it. It's a parasite. And now it's feeding off it. But in so doing, it's releasing all that carbohydrate back into the environment. The amazing thing is, it's actually decaying some of the toughest organic material known to science, uh, lignum. Only this and a few other things can do that. If that weren't doing the job, this branch would lie here littering the woodland floor for probably millennia. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a real power source, this, this fungus. Yeah. It always grows in these, these tufts. Right. A nice example of it there. And you can see the dusting of white spores. Uh, on the adjacent caps there, it produces millions of, of white spores that disperse in the air and infect other trees. But it, it's all part of the natural cycle. It's a killer, yes, but it's a, a natural born killer. Um, <laughs> and it leaves gaps in the canopy for the light to come through. And yeah, yeah. We, when we see it on trees that are growing next to the road or next to buildings, we you know see it as a sign that that tree eventually is going to come. Yes, um, it's been weakened. But, so you know, yeah. it's an indicator. But it's, as you say, it's really important for the ecosystem and for woodland ecology. It's it an is. important part of that. Yeah. yeah. Yes. That sweet little ring that grows halfway up the stalk. Uh, sometimes you can move it up and down. Mm. It's very distinctive. And the honey comes from the honey colour of the cap on the stalk. So it's an easy one. Yeah. Very distinctive. Right. Brilliant. Ed, an edible one at last. Common yellow rustula, a rustula ocreduca, one of the, the brittle gills. And uh, no self-respecting woodland around here would be without this. It's, it's key. It's uh, infecting all the trees around it in a really good way. It's helping get nutrients and water from the soil. And uh, though we see it here growing in moss, its roots go much deeper than that, right down maybe half a metre mingling with all the rootlets of the tree in a very intimate way and um, facilitating the, the behaviour of the roots in a really good way. And at the same time it's really pretty and this is the, the sort of tip of the iceberg fruit body and it's always this delightful sort of soft yellow colour and then on the underside I can just see it's got you know really pure white stalk and pure white gills and if you touch the gills they, they just break in your hand hence the name brittle gills. It's very distinctive. These are amongst the most highly evolved of all the fungi that we find in the woods. Right. And they're mycorrhizal. They're, yeah. they're beneficial, helping the trees grow. Nice find. Very satisfying. You know, real sweetie. Thank you. What's this, Nigel? It's a sickna. Yes, and that bright sort of scarlet red is a... Sure warning, it's actually quite poisonous. Um, but it's in the same group as the uh, lovely common yellow rustula. It's a rustula emetica. Um, and from the tree's point of view, it's doing an equally good job. Um, just happens to be poisonous to us. Clearly not poisonous to some little animals that have been nibbling at the edges <laughs> and have quite enjoyed their feast. But for mammals, for most mammals, certainly humans, it's quite poisonous. It's a pretty little thing though, and again it's got the white stalk and the just slightly off-white gills on this one. Um, and it'd be releasing millions of white spores every night. Ph phenomenal output. And they'll be going distributed in the, in the leaf mould and then growing down 
and eventually making contact with the rootlets of the tree. Right. It's mycorrhizal again. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant, thank you. <clears throat> Actually, related to that, we've got milk caps here. They're doing exactly the same good job. Um, and the name, the clue's in the name. They produce a lot of milk. Um, I'll just pick this one here to show you. And if I turn it up upside down and then just run a nail across here, it should produce some milk. Hmm. This is a rather dry specimen, and it's not, which is a bit unfortunate. Let's try another one, shall we? But milk caps, they produce this latex. It's a bit dry as well. Um, and it, it exudes as a milk onto the surface. Have a look at this one. Mm, no, they're rather dry, I'm afraid. Not doing what they should do. But I'm sure they are milk caps. And these are really common in these oak woodlands. And uh, they're mycorrhizal again. Right. You can see on the underside of the cap where it's exuded milk that's dried on the gills and left that deposit. Rather like the white sap that comes out of dandelion when you wound it. And quite a few uh, fungi do this, quite naturally. And sometimes the milk is white, sometimes it's colourless. Some of them it's even blood red. Um, and it can flavour the fungi really strongly as well to the point where they're totally inedible. They're so acrid and sharp. Um, and sometimes the color changes on contact with the air as well. So it can be a useful identification feature. Yeah, the milk caps are a really nice group. And like the rustulas, the brittle gills, highly evolved and all of them very beneficial for tree growth. This is, this is lovely. It's on this mound of moss is uh, a clump of sulphur tuft. It's not eating the moss or interacting with the moss in any way really. What it's liking is what's underneath this pile of birch wood that it's slowly but surely decaying and converting into essential nutrients. And it's feeding off that itself and probably the moss is doing the same. It's very distinctive and quite common. One of our commonest so-called saprophytic uh, fungi that help in the recycling process by their ongoing process of decomposition. And um, they're very distinctive. They're always this lovely bright, sort of yellowy, orangey, brown color. The gills on the underside, little plates, they change from being white to eventually black as they produce black spores in large quantities after a few days. And then they just wither away and they're gone. But in the process, they've liberated millions of spores for the next generation. But they're charming. Some people eat them in the Far East, but mostly in this country they're avoided and they probably cause you stomach ache. Ah, hello. Hiya. Hi. <laughs> Did you have a good day? Yeah, what a wonderful day for uh, looking for mushrooms. We found all sorts. That's great. This is one of my favourite places in the world, I have to say. <laughs> yeah, isn't it a wonderful site right in the middle of, uh, Kel uh, of uh, you know, Celtic rainforest, right in the middle of uh, Snowdonia National Park here in Wales. And oh, open well. for visitors to enjoy whenever they want. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Fungi are just like one aspect of this fantastic biodiversity that we have here, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, we're really lucky to have this site right here, so... Uh, yeah. yeah, it's a great place to work. Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> okay. Right, we're nine. Yep. Ta -da. So thank you Nigel, I've really enjoyed learning about the fungi and seeing the different rustulas and uh, the milk cap and yeah, it's been, it's been really good, thank you. Thank you, enjoyed it Anita. Great pleasure to come to this splendid site. I mean this site is of national and international importance, not just for fungi, mm -hmm. um, but for every other aspect of natural history you care to mention for me. Geology, the insects, the, the birds, and of course the other flowering plants and the very trees that make up this splendid habitat. It's really diverse and it's so good to see it being knowledgeably and capably looked after by the Woodland Trust and really accessible to the public with lots of information. 
and help people understand what a very special place it is. Indeed, you're, you're, you're totally right and I'm totally in agreement with just all these treasures that we have in this woodland and it's great to be on the site as you say with the Woodland Trust and part of the Celtic Rainforest project that is conserving this woodland and to have these kind of sites which are open to people to, to come and enjoy that for themselves and uh, for people like yourselves to help us make these kind of videos which helps us again with a wider audience. Yeah, it's good. It's been great. Thank, Thank you very you. much Thank for your you. time. Thank okay. you. Oh well, Jochen uh, thank you very much for a wonderful day. What a brilliant day uh, to pick mushrooms. Yeah, yeah I agree. Do you know? Do you not? Weer, Jochen Wauw, Jan, Thank you very much. I've learned a lot. Yeah, thank you very much both for coming. Jochen Wauw, really has. Champion. Excuse me. Don't you understand, Yeah. So of course today wouldn't have been possible without the input of Covnard, would it? Yeah, no, right, they're a really important organisation um, that have really helped um, us support this film and also really important um, in just gathering uh, records of, of wildlife across uh, North Wales um, and you know we've just been around a beautiful woodland um, and without Covnod being there to, to sort of catalogue records of, of, uh, of species, you know, we wouldn't necessarily have that information so yeah. thank Total, you totally yeah. important for yeah. us to do our conservation work isn't yeah. it yeah so we're really grateful mm. for Kovna today to uh, to be here and help us to do this film indeed yeah. thank you thank you